This limited edition OLED Steam Deck has three super annoying quality issues that you need to know about. But first, I want to say that the design of this limited edition unit is absolutely gorgeous, and if you are looking for one of these, tough luck. Only second-hand market would have it at a premium cost. So if you want to buy mine, send me some offers. I'm serious. Let's talk. Roman does consumer tips. Since Valve is still a brand new player in the handheld computer market, there are quality issues that I wish they would have addressed with the refreshed second generation of this console. But as usual, we got to work with what we got. Urgent interruption. My cat, who's taking care of comments, just said we're getting a lot of traction on Legion Go video up here. But along with the traction, we're getting a lot of stupid comments like Oh, my Legion Go is the best, this is the best thing I ever had, and this review is stupid. Or like this guy who never took his console outdoors and using a PS5 controller to play it, let alone the FPS function he's so eager to defend. So she's asking to make sure that if you're writing garbage like that, be constructive while being respectful. Because that cat, she's gonna roast you guys. Like. Just keep it in mind who you're dealing with. That cat is no joke. And she also says that if you don't subscribe to this video by the end of it, she'll come personally and shit in your shoes. And remember, experiences are different for everyone. So if something feels good to you, it doesn't mean it's gonna fit others. I also noticed that only 10% of you are subscribed watching this video. How do you expect us to do all those giveaways if you're not subscribed? And now back to the show. Unlike their primary competitors like ROG Ally or Lenovo Legion Go, who got bazillion years of experience and have their first impressions sorted out the moment you grab their product, with that crisp, solid build and premium touch, the Steam Deck OLED is still struggling with the material and parts quality. So when you grab one of these for the first time after holding Legion Go, you get surprised not only by how light it is, which is a plus, but also by how squeaky and cheap the plastic feels. As a result, the rumbles that are built into the touch pads vibrate through the plastic like this whenever you attempt to use a touchscreen keyboard. Luckily, you don't need to do it often. I ended up just turning them off entirely, though I cannot say anything bad about that gentle haptic rumble when you use this as intended. Hell yeah, baby, rumble to me. But overall, in defense of cheaper plastic feel, fingerprints are completely invisible on Steam Deck, at least on the limited edition one. Unlike, for example, with Legion Go, which is a mess. Well, if the previously mentioned material quality and tactile sensations are something you can ignore, this back buttons will make you question your choice of a console. Not only you can make music with how they sound, Ah. But you cannot use them as intended, as this requires force to be activated around the grip portion. You know, the one most of us are used to, from those numerous controllers. However, if you are more used to pressing against the back buttons over here, then you are in luck and you'll have no issues using it, only the music. But seriously, I bench press 200 pounds for a warm up and still struggle pressing this in games. Who are these made for? Anyone knows? And this makes me wonder if excessive stiffness was done intentionally to prevent accidental activation during handle squeeze, or was it just a poor choice of buttons and supplier? Let's chat in the comments and please consider subscribing while you are down there, or at least hitting that like button as a high five. And this is how easy back buttons are on Legion Go. Well, this third one is probably gonna get some people on a fence here. The third dislike goes towards bumpers, triggers, D-pad and front-facing buttons. Just like the other two points I brought up, these sound cheap and feel cheaper than many $20 controllers you can buy off Amazon. And I'm 100% sure this is not intentional. Both bumpers and triggers have this mushy feedback to them and cannot even stand close to the quality you get with Legion Go or ROG Ally.
And next up are front facing buttons. These are alright, but not as good as what you get with competitors, like Legion Go. And I'm sure Steam Deck would only benefit from mechanical front-facing buttons, like many controllers nowadays. D-pad. Again, when compared to Legion Go, I feel like it has too much of a travel range and may become an issue in fighting games. Which of course could be prevented with mechanical D-pad, just like the buttons. And since we're talking about controls, I would say Hall Effect thumbsticks would be a plus too. Though the current ones are doable. But we love Steam Deck for other reasons, right? And if Steam Deck is not your favorite console so far, which one is? And which one of them do you think has the best buttons, ergonomics and overall quality today? Let's chat in the comments. As for me, I'm really curious about that MSI clothing. It's running on Intel chipset, has the largest battery so far and smaller size. So I'm really curious how they addressed ergonomics on that thing. I guess we'll find out soon, because it's due for release anytime now. So smash those subscribe and like buttons as you mean it, to be notified when I get my hands on one of these MSI clothes. On this note, I'll see you down there or in this next video where I talk about the worst and best major brand consoles for traveling in 2024. Or maybe this Lenovo Legion Go video over there. Spend smart and Godspeed.